Hey, y'all, you know what today is? It is Wonderful Wednesday. Do you know why it's a wonderful day? Because we're going to talk about the wonderful things about to happen up in Hiawassee, Georgia. And I will tell you, that is the prettiest place if you just want a daycation. Miss Hilda, isn't Hiawassee a wonderful place for a daycation? It is a beautiful place for a daycation. And it's so pretty with the mountains and the lake, Lake Chattoog there. It's starting yeah. to fill up now with the... Uh, the spring rains that's getting ready to come and it's just absolutely a gorgeous place. I don't know if a prettier place. No, I don't either. And, and I'll tell you, the drive up there is kind of like a prescription for happiness. Yes. You know what I used to tell my friend David Ralston? A lot of y'all go too fast on the road. And I, I'm one of these drivers now. I'm over in the old lady slow lane. <laughs> and I'm watching y'all. And I'm thinking, number one, you're going to get to meet the Fannin County's finest. You're going to get yourself a ticket. Or you're going to get to meet Towns County's finest. You're going to get yourself a ticket. Slow down. And so I told David Ralston, I said, I want this huge billboard down at 108 that says, Welcome to the mountains. Now <laughs> slow your down. <laughs> He said, Sherry, I can't do that. I said, yes, you can. Just put a donkey over here and they'll understand. You know? so he, just, he said, you ain't right. And I said, that's all right. But y'all, when you come to the mountains, relax. Yes. Stop in Ball Ground. Stop in Jasper. Stop in Tate even. Stop in Tate. Stop in Talking Rock and just ease your way up there and then land in Hiawassee. Yes, absolutely. It's a beautiful area. And like you say, slow down and enjoy the scenery absolutely. as you drive toward Hiawassee. Yes. Because, I mean, it is just beautiful. I mean, yeah. there's so many pretty things to see and it is a relaxing mood and relaxing way to, to really enjoy mm -hmm. life. Peaceful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. I watch the tags and, and I look at the people's tags and I say you gonna get a ticket you gonna get a ticket if they're coming out of Fulton County it's like they're coming so fast because they just have escaped right. the, 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 the reps of <laughs> the devil yes. so they're, they're trying to get away I understand that but y'all really just slow down and enjoy enjoy it, it. Just yes enjoy there's it a lot to see and do in the mountains too it well really this is. weekend only 3,000 people will get to enjoy a concert because it's sold out yes we've got Aaron uh, Lewis coming this weekend and Shane Prophet is going to be the opening act, and it's completely sold out this weekend. 3,000 people. Yeah. We got 77 campers checking in on Friday there at the fairgrounds. Oh my gosh. So, and all the hotels will be full and everything. So, it's That's a great so way cool. to start out. It yeah. really is. Well, I was thinking about when we used to bring the motor home up there and just waking up in the peace and quiet of Lake Chateau. That is the coolest campground. It that is. That campground is it's amazing. It's beautiful. It's surrounded by the lake there. Like I said, there's boating, skiing, fishing, whatever you want to do on the lake. And then the Hamilton Gardens is right there on the fairgrounds. And you can walk through the rhododendron garden. It's got nature trails to walk mm -hmm. through and see all the beauty. And we're doing so much up there with the acoustic sunsets. We do a spring, summer, and fall series there on the fairgrounds. We're doing something new this year down in Eller Holler inside the fairgrounds. We're going to do the spring series there and then have the summer and fall up there. But it's every Thursday night, mm -hmm. and we do each one five weeks at a time. So go to our website and check all that out, georgemountainfairgrounds.com. Mm -hmm. It's just a great way to come and spend the evening there and watch the sunset go now, down. Now, last week, because Cherokee County schools were out, a lot of people went different places. Is, did y'all have an event last week? Uh, we had one week before last. Okay. We, uh, we've had uh, Corey Smith and we've had Chris Jansen since January, the 1st of January. Mm -hmm. We've had two concerts. This will be our third one. But we've got a lot lined up and we're excited about all the different and ones that are coming. And for everybody who knows, we trust Miss Hilda to bring tickets. I want y'all to look. And tonight on Facebook, I'm going to give away some tickets. And Bill Senior, yes, sweetie, we got you some. So look at this. This is just like <laughs> my hot flash hit at 4.30 this morning. I wish I'd have had these this morning because I woke up sweating and mad. <laughs> well, that's, that's a great way to promote and advertise all of our concerts it's that awesome. we got coming up. And I appreciate you giving those out and passing them out and helping promote all of our events. On uh, March the 23rd, we got the front men of country music coming. This is Richie McDonald, Larry Stewart, and Jim Rushlow. Richie McDonald is the lead singer of Lone Star. Larry uh -huh. Stewart is uh, Restless Heart. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And then Tim Rushlow is Little Texas. That's now you awesome. talk about a show, that's going to be an awesome that show. That is going to be cool. And the yeah. special guest is going to be John Barry. Yeah. So that's going to be March 23rd and tickets are still available for that. And then we have... Um, and uh, I'm going to keep some of these and get Trace to, to scan these and then we'll just use them regularly. Yes, and on I've got the a set. whole file yeah, here with yeah, all the different yeah. ones coming up. So I want you yeah, to we'll do that. be sure and take That'll all that. That'll be cool. Yeah. But, uh, we also have the Rutta Dinner Festival coming up. It starts mm, April the 12th. It's beautiful. hard to believe that it's almost time for all this stuff. Uh -huh. But it starts April the 12th through May the 5th. So there'll be uh, music up there every weekend. The plants will be for sale. The gardens will be in bloom. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have the Plain Air Festival that's going to be coming up. That's uh, the weekend I have the wine festival, Hiawassee Highlands Wine Festival. Mm -hmm. That's Mother's Day weekend and we've got Dina Carter going to be there in concert. She's went oh, since wow. that strawberry wine. Yeah, yeah, so we yeah. thought that would be good yeah, for the fun. for the wine festival. Yeah. And then we've got Dustin Lynch coming October, I mean April the 20th and then the Memory Lane Classic Car Show. We've had that, this will be our fourth year to have mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. That's going to be April the 26th and 27th and it is a growing uh, car show. We've really grown it a lot and we have a lot of cars already pre-registered. We have vendors set up. We have a stage down there where we have all this great entertainment. True Youngblood will be part of the entertainment. It's a local guy that's went to Nashville. He's got a recording and mm -hmm. got an album now, so he's done really well with his career already. And uh, we also have 38 special in concert that night on Saturday night. And I know night. somebody who wants to see them, and we got him some tickets, okay. and he's excited. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have actually, I think that show's probably going to sell out, because we've already sold over 1,700 tickets for that yeah. show. Yeah. Bill so Senior likes certain things, and he's so funny, and then his wife Melissa likes certain things. So it's funny how um, he's a gospel singer, but he loves that old stuff. He yeah. loves that old country. And, and you're bringing, when we think about the years that we've been doing this, we've lost so many of the greats that you brought to yes. Hiawassee. People got an opportunity to see George Jones, Merle Haggard, Loretta Lynn, Charlie Pride. So Conway many, Twitty. I Conway mean, Twitty. Think about yeah. uh, all the ones. Tammy Wynette. I had mm -hmm. Tammy and George both there. I think about that a lot because I've been at the fairgrounds for 43 years. And I think about all the artists that we've had there and things that's happened to him, and I miss him so much. I mean, yeah. Johnny Russell, Jim Ed Brown, I could just go on and on forever yeah. mentioning yeah. the ones that have passed that we had there, and it's just, it's, uh, Marty Robbins. I oh, mean, yeah. oh, oh my, my gosh. Was he not the best? I saw him, I got to meet he and Michael Landon when I was 12 years old, and Marty Robbins, that guitar, I still, it's been 100 years ago, yeah, just about. Yeah. <laughs> just but, about. And, 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 oh, what a loss. I know. And then another one I really miss a lot, and he was young when he passed, was Joe Diffie, you know. Oh, yeah. He passed with yeah. COVID and all, and I just, I just really miss all those people that I got to know and work with for so many years, mm -hmm. and, and now we don't have them, and it's, it's kind of sad. And there's a lot, of, a lot of new ones coming on, but they're, they're just not like what it used to be, I right, guess is what right. I'm trying to say. Well, I know that having Loretta Lynn there, the last time she was there, um, you, we knew that she was getting to a point, she sat down a lot during that show. She was tired. You know, yes, she, had she paid was tired. Her dues. Yes. She had paid her dues. Yes, and another good one that I always thought about was Don Williams, too. Oh, yeah. He was so awesome. Yeah. And I, he actually got there to Hawassi to do his show, and he had bronchitis, and he was not able to do the show that night, so it had got canceled that morning, mm -hmm. and it was a sold-out show. And he was actually up there in his bus at Lake Chateau Lodge, but I just miss all those people. Oh, I really yeah. do. It's yeah. really sad that... We um, have. Uh, well, you know, one of my favorites, on. and we've pulled two interviews today that we're going to share a little bit with y'all Charlie Pride and Earl Thomas Conley. Yes. And Earl Thomas Conley, I just keep going back to that interview. His band, his whole band had the flu. He had a temperature of yes. 104. I remember that. But he sat right there and did an hour long interview. Yes. He was amazing, but his talent, and I always look back, he was such an amazing writer, but he had 23 number one hits. Yes. And I would never have met him had it not been for Hiawassee and the Georgia right. Mountain Fair. He was a great entertainer, and I miss him a lot. And another one that we had there before he got so expensive was Toby Keith. Mm -hmm. We had two mm -hmm. sold out shows um, and then a week later um, uh, he canceled because of 9-11. It was right at the mm -hmm. time of 9-11. He was supposed to be there the next week. But he came back the following year in March and we did you know two sold out mm -hmm. shows on him. And he was so young, you know, I just missed. He was. And you know one of the great things about Toby Keith, he not only left a great amount of wealth for his family, 
he took so much money and invested in childhood cancer yes, research. Yes, I saw that. Yes. And I love that if you're making that money, you give back and yes. you give back and you're not greedy and you and he was he was amazing. It's still weird to me that that shell of a man he went down so fast. He did. He it, went down so fast. Cancer's cruel. It really yeah, is. It really, and he, really Donna, is. Donna we talk, both dealt with him. it, and we know that yes. you know it, it's like. And and that I'm, I'm glad I thought about that. Um, I want y'all to say a prayer today. I have a very very special friend whose husband had a colonoscopy yesterday. We don't know the results yet, but his family history is not good. And um, we're hoping that his came out okay. I hadn't heard from her and it makes me nervous because I was hoping no news is good news and that's how I'm gonna assume it. Right. But say a prayer today for every single person facing that test, that surgery, that something that has to do with cancer because we were talking about this last night. COVID destroyed a lot of lives and, and lives will never come back. But the one thing that's happening, many people who had COVID and had the shot are getting very weird cancers. Yeah. Very, very weird cancers. So let's pray that we can stop this craziness. I, I'm sure there's a cure for cancer out there somewhere. But if you think about it, the big pharmaceutical companies wouldn't be making a lot of money if we stopped cancer, and right. that worries me because yeah. often greed leads to problems. Right. But but pray for there's so many people. Every everywhere I look, one of my friends dad is having all kinds of lab work done because he's losing blood and i remember my husband's doing the same thing and i'm like oh you just hate when you hear that yeah but you do. every day just pray that there's somebody out there that says we can solve this problem we can end this we all know 50 people who've died of cancer absolutely yeah, yeah. yes it's and crazy. it don't matter what age that's no, for sure no but on to our next events we got coming up. I mentioned the Hiawassee Highlands Wine Festival. We're going to have about 30 wineries uh, from the North Georgia area there at that festival, and we'll have vendors set up. We'll have all types of dinner, uh, different entertainment on the stages and everything. So come out and enjoy that. And, and it's Mother's Day weekend. Bring your mother and have a whole entire weekend. Enjoy Dina Carter there. And then we got uh, the Georgia Mountain Fire and Smoke Cooking Festival. Do you remember when I used to have the uh, Georgia Mountain Egg Egg Fest? Oh, yes, yes. Right, we cooked on the big green mm -hmm. eggs. Well, this is kind of, we're bringing, we haven't had it in about three years, mm -hmm. but we're bringing it back and it's going to be something similar to that. We're going to have uh, the Primos. It's a cooker, cooker like uh, kind of shaped like the green eggs. Mm -hmm. We'll have the green eggs, the Primos, Blackstones. We'll have all different kinds of cookers. Mm -hmm. And we'll have 125 cooks that are cooking on those. Wow. Uh, now, do they cook and people pay so much to sample yeah, their food? Yeah, they, they, they buy works? a taster's ticket. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, $30, I think, for the taster's ticket. And you go through and taste all the food that all the people have cooked. There's 125 cooks coming from all over the United States and they are just absolutely amazing cooks. And they start out, it opens at nine o'clock in the morning. So they start out with breakfast, you get to eat breakfast food, then they go right into lunch, wow. you get to eat the lunch food. And then of course they start letting the, uh, the eggs cook and the primos and all cool down around three o'clock. So it's nine to three, mm -hmm. but it is an awesome event. We'll have entertainment on the stage. We'll have vendors set up. And uh, we're working on a concert. We don't have it booked yet, but we're working on a concert for that that weekend as well. So come out and enjoy that. And then we have two rodeos coming into town. <laughs> Can you imagine? We have um, the Hiawassee Pro Rodeo will be Memorial Day weekend. It's three days. It's May the 24th, 25th, and 26th. Those tickets are on sale now. And then we have another one. Uh, Labor Day weekend, mm -hmm. and it's two nights. It's on uh, this uh, Saturday night and Sunday night. So those tickets are on sale as well. So come out and get all your tickets for the rodeo and enjoy all the vendors that's set up for that. And just have a big weekend there on Lake Chateau at the It's uh, funny that you mentioned um, rodeos because do you remember Isaac Streetman? He was here yes. on the show. Uh -huh. He was an idol contestant, yes. and he did great. Well, he's doing rodeo. And, and he loves doing rodeo. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I would be afraid you'd break your hand and couldn't play your guitar. But he loves doing that. There's something about that rodeo deal. Yeah. People absolutely fall in love with you it. You know, I really have learned a lot. We've been doing the rodeos for a few years now, but I've learned a lot just by just watching the, the contestants and how tough they are. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of respect for mm -hmm. them for what they do in that because it is real yeah, deal. Yeah, I mean, it really yeah. is. And I'm working with a rodeo company, uh, Southern Rodeo Company out of Rockmart, Georgia. Mm -hmm. 
uh, Robin Brooks has been a great uh, partnership with him and they have a whole family that's involved in it and it's just so wonderful to work with them. I really enjoy working for them. And, and that's a kids event. Kids love rodeos. Yes, you they do. You love to take your little boys, your little girls in their cowboy boots to the rodeo. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. John Meagle Ford uh, out of Cleveland, Georgia, John Meagle Ford slash Chevy is our premium sponsor for the both rodeos. So. Uh, they'll be there with their trucks and they'll be using them to haul the barrels in the arena and have their banners and everything at, but they're uh, doing the premium sponsorship with us for the rodeo. So thanks to them. We appreciate yeah. their support. Now, where does the rodeo happen? Where the fairgrounds it's are? It's on the ball field. Oh, really? Yeah, we wow. set the arena yeah. up on the ball field and we plow the ball field up and fix it. That's the only place we've got on the fairgrounds, mm -hmm. but you got the parking lot. we got a thousand mm -hmm. car parking lot. And then the handicap, if you're handicapped and you can't walk down to the ball field, then we have um, six and eight passenger golf carts that will be mm -hmm. transporting the people. My mm -hmm. security will help do that. And then when the rodeo is over, they'll take you back to your cars. So mm -hmm. come on out and don't let anything keep you from coming. And just It's so much fun. It's a family event, too. Mm -hmm. People bring their little kids, and they're so dressed up and so cute in their little cowboy hats yeah. and their yeah. jeans and yeah. boots. So precious. Yep. But we got the Happy Together Tour coming up too. Uh, this is on June the 7th. That was really successful last year. It was. It? This yeah. is like the third year, I think, in a row that we've yeah. had this. They changed the groups up a little bit, mm -hmm. but we're going to have it on a Friday night this year. It's going to be the Turtles, Jay and the Americans, the Association, Bad Finger, the Vogues, and the Cow Seals. Okay, I'm trying to think of each one of those as a song that they do, and it's so funny. And the Vogues, I can't think of one. I'll have to, I'll have to Google that when yeah. I get out there and listen to some of their music. Because they have I all of them have some hits, and I, I yeah. don't have that with me. All the hits they've had, you know, and everything. But it's such a fun show, and everybody gets up and dances with them. And it's I already sold over a thousand tickets, so it's funny because the other night I was going through my phone deleting stuff and talking about dancing uh -huh. at the Beach Boys concert. I couldn't see. The Beach Boys, because everybody in front of me was up dancing. Oh, okay. And I was trying to video, and I was trying to go around them and go, you know. Where was that at? at? At your your place. Oh, when I the had beach the Beach Boys. boys. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we were, you know, back people there. love them, and they did get they up and danced. They danced and yes. danced and danced. They're amazing yeah. how good they still sound too. I was yeah. just so impressed with how good yeah, their show yeah, was. Yeah. I loved I, it. I was laughing about it because you know I told you the story about Bruce. It was like when he first joined them and. And I got to meet him, and, and, and so backstage I was looking for what I thought Bruce would look like. No. <laughs> <laughs> totally different, right? Totally different. Yeah. What a 14-year-old girl remembered. It ain't no. the same. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't the same. <laughs> but it was, the music was great. Right. The music was Something great. Something new that we've got coming up this year is the Hiawassee Rod Run. That's going to be June the 20th through the 22nd. This is a promoter out of uh, South Carolina. He wanted to do a, a rod run there at the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he has done really well with that. We're partnering with him, working with him on it. So that's going to be June the 20th through the 22nd. Is it kind of like what they do in Pigeon Forge? Yes. Kind of the same concept? Yeah, and he's already got, they put a lot of the vehicles down in those booths down in there where the mm -hmm. craft area is at. Mm -hmm. And he's got everything full. So he's really making plans. Got a lot of vendors coming. He's got a band coming that'll be playing on the stage down there. So. Come out and enjoy that. And of course, the George Mountain Fair's coming up. Seven, 73 years. Can you imagine that? <laughs> it's crazy. That's going to be August the 16th through the 24th. And we got some great entertainment and lined up. And you know, up. when you say 73 years, you've been there 43 years. Who did you replace? Who was your protege? Well, Bob, when I started there, Bob Anderson was the president. And mm -hmm. he, I worked with him for a couple of years and he passed away. Then a little bit later, we used some volunteers. And then Dale Thurman took over as the general manager. And uh, he stayed there for a few years. He, he was there from 1986 to 1995. When he left, he recommended me for the job mm -hmm. in 1995. So that's wow. the other place. And he went to the Greater Gulf State Fair in Mobile, Alabama. And then he left there and went to the Gwinnett County Fair. Mm -hmm. And he managed the Gwinnett County Fair for many, many years. And he mm -hmm. just passed away re recently. Wow. So. Um, he did a, a fantastic job. He's actually from Hawassi, so. Mm -hmm. So you had some yeah. big shoes to fill. Yes, I did. I think mm -hmm. she filled them. What do y'all think? <laughs> I think she filled them. I've yeah. worked really hard at what I've done, and yeah. I've really enjoyed it all these years. But we got Gene Watson and the Bellamy Brothers coming. I know you said you yes, love. Yes, I love Gene Watson. Gene Watson. Yep, he's yep. uh, going to be. It'll be Gene Watson and the Bellamy's together. He does together. that real music that 
real country people like yes. to hear. He's still and sounds so good. He does sound good. He don't miss a note when he's mm -hmm. singing. You know, I just look at him and I think, oh my gosh, he still got it. You know, yeah, he does yeah, a great job. Yeah. But he'll be, they'll be there on August the 16th and those tickets are on sale. And we got Tommy James and the Shondells coming the next day, August the 17th. Mm -hmm. And we don't have those tickets on sale yet, but they're getting ready to go on sale. And then we have the American Pop. This is the Grassroots, the Box Tops, and the Buckinghams. Mm -hmm. And this will be August the 22nd. Oh, the Buckinghams. Yes. Oh, what is that song? I used to get it in my head all the time. Oh, no, I'll have to think about this. Because that, oh, oh, I'll Google you'll it. Come, you'll come I'll up Google with it. it. <laughs> uh, but we try to get a variety of music. We do country, we do bluegrass, we do a little bit of rock, and try to, uh, gospel, we do all of it to try to, make it happen for everybody that likes different kinds of music. We've got the Guess Who coming. Now, we're going way back on the Guess yeah, Who. Yeah. That's August the 23rd, and those tickets are not on sale yet, but they're going on sale soon. And then Crowder, this is a contemporary Christian group, mm -hmm. and they are really so well. They're going to be there on August the 24th, which is the last day of the fair, and they have sold. It's unbelievable the tickets they've sold. A lot of the churches are buying mm -hmm, mm -hmm. groups for their youth, and I think that show's going to sell out. So That's if you're planning awesome. on coming, I wouldn't wait too much longer about getting those tickets. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have Emmylou Harris booked. Yay. She's going to be there on September the 14th. And those tickets haven't gone on sale yet, but they're getting ready to go on sale here right Has away. Has she ever been there? I think a long, long time ago she might have. Okay. I'm not not 100% sure on that. Somebody asked me that the other yeah, day. I don't remember in all yeah. the years that I've known about it. I don't much. I'm not positive. I think I'm, like back in the 80s we might have had her, but I'm not sure. And then this is a festival that we've been having for several years. and. Uh, have always enjoyed having Daily and Vincent's American Made mm -hmm. Festival. It used to be called Daily and Vincent's Land Fest, mm -hmm. but they changed the name of it and did some rebranding. And it's a three-day festival, and it's September the 19th through the 21st. And we have some absolutely awesome entertainment coming mm -hmm. up for this. We've got Shannon Doerr, Ricky Skaggs, and the Kentucky Thunder, Tracy Bird, the Cody Norris Show, the Gatlin Brothers, and Neil McCoy. All, and then, of course, Daly and Vincent will play all three days. Mm -hmm. But that's quite a lineup, isn't yeah. it? And um, one, of the, one of the most fun interviews ever was Larry Gatlin. Is that right? He was so funny. He was, do you remember when he jumped up on this yes, desk? Yes, yes. I forgot about to that. To show me about his blue jeans, and yeah. I'm going, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I he was showing me what great American-made blue jeans do. Yes. And I said, okay. <laughs> but yeah. this schedule is amazing. <clears throat> uh, each group will play somewhere, you know, an hour, an hour and a half each. But it's all three days. You can buy a VIP ticket, which we do two days of meet and greet with Daly and Vincent. If you want to go to their meet and greet party, I have it up at the top of the hill at Hamilton Gardens. But if you go on our website, it breaks all this down on how the tickets work. You know, if you want all three days. Or if you just want a one day, you can buy a one day. Mm -hmm. If you want to want to go one day and see certain groups or whatever. But you talk about a fun event. This is really fun. We have a lot of food vendors set up around the music hall and a few crafts, arts and crafts. And, of course, the concession stand and everything will be open. But this is a great way to come out and enjoy the whole entire mm -hmm. weekend mm -hmm. and just really. And um, it's before the fall rush when the mountains are so crazy busy yes. and the leaves haven't turned yet. Yes. And the temperatures sometimes are cooling off at night, but, but not much. But it's going to be really, really neat again just to welcome people to it fall is. in the mountains. And this, yeah. this is really, um, it's gone back on RFD TV too. Mm -hmm. They've took their show back on there and people follow them on that show. They took it off for a while and went to Ac Circle Access, I think is what mm -hmm. it was called. And a lot of people couldn't get that, but now they're back on there and it's really made a difference because people come from all over the United States. Oh, yeah to see this. I'm yeah. telling you, they yeah. just love it. And you know what's so funny? They get to Hiawassee and they go, why would we want to leave here? I why know. don't we buy a house? Yeah, and Y'all that's what happens. Houses available. <laughs> that's what's happened over the years is yeah. they, yeah. they found Hiawassee because of the Georgia Mountain Fairgrounds. That's grounds. right. They that's really right. Did. That's right. And they said so that's what brought us to Hiawassee was the Georgia Mountain Fairgrounds. Yeah. And then we bought property here and we yes. built a house yes. or whatever. Yeah. And uh, they fell in love with the place. Everybody that comes, they wants to yeah. buy property yeah. there or live yeah. there. They're so, um, they just love it. It yeah. is a beautiful place. We also have the Neil Diamond Tribute Concert coming up October the 5th. Uh, this will be like the first weekend in October. Those tickets are available. And then the George Mountain Fall Festival is coming up October the 11th through the 19th. You think about it, it's a long time till fall, but really it's I not. Know. It'll, It'll be, be here before you can turn yeah. around. Yeah. But we've got the first day of the fall festival. We've got Dylan Scott coming, and those tickets are 
going on sale here real soon. He's an upcoming new artist. Mm -hmm. uh, he's had a few hits. People, the younger crowd's going to enjoy him. Joe Nichols, he was there many years ago. It's been a long time since we've had him, but he'll be there the second day, October the 12th. Those tickets are on sale, and they're selling really well, so get your tickets for that. And then we're working on October the 17th, the Mal Malpas Brothers, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. they opened for Merle Haggard there mm -hmm. at the fairgrounds. And we're working on trying to get Tracy Lawrence uh, put with the Malpas Brothers. We don't have it confirmed yet, but mm -hmm. we have an offer in, and the routing is working, so hopefully that'll get confirmed here mm -hmm. in a few days. And then October the 19th is Nate Smith. That's another new upcoming artist that's had some hits, and I think he's going places with his career. So if you want to see these people, uh, it's a good time to come and see them now because later on, I won't be able to afford those mm -hmm. people. Right. And that's right. the way it happens. We get them before they get so famous. Or, or if you want to see Gene Watson, which might be one of his last performances because he's 80. Is that yes, correct? Yes, he is 80. Well, yeah. we got to interview Charlie Pride. He was 79 when we interviewed him, and then he died from COVID, remember? Yes. And, and that was like, that was a dream come true to be right there with Charlie Pride at the Georgia Mountain Fair. He did that show. He never stopped. He didn't have to sit down. He didn't have to rest. That man danced through the whole concert. Was that Charlie Pride? Charlie Pride. Yes. He was almost 80 years old. Yes. And he, I he could that. put old folks to shame yeah. because he was amazing. But when we saw him, we had no idea that would be one of his last concerts. I know. I because didn't Because then either. COVID came in and. and you know, sadly. Yes. But what what an entertainer. And you're talking Gene Watson is probably the oldest of the group yeah. that you're bringing in this year. I would think so. So He's if you want to huh? see Gene Watson, this may be your chance to, to do it. To come and see it because, yeah. you know, yeah. they can't continue forever doing it, you know. Right. And, and as age takes toll. I don't know. Now, Freddie Hart did. It's so funny because... Freddie Hart was one of those. He would not give it up. <laughs> he, he, he just kept turning in little places in Alabama here and there. And I was on the phone with him one day, and it, it was so funny because I was like, he's like 90. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, but, but, but that that voice, nobody ever replaced Freddie Hart. Right. Nobody will ever replace Charlie Pride. No, that's true. Nobody will ever replace Loretta Lynn. That's and, true. And, you know, Loretta Lynn's granddaughter, Emmy, is um, now on American Idol, which is really cool. Right. And she did an original song about anorexia. Oh, okay. which was really something else and and I think it has a personal touch to it she just you could see it was from her heart and she moved forward on American Idol so it's gonna be interesting to see she's totally different from her grandmother she's very oh she's just she she's kind of like a breath of fresh air right it's gonna be really unusual to see that that'd be interesting to see but you know um, Conway and Loretta's Grandchildren have got mm -hmm. a show together right, too. Right. Yeah. Uh, Taylor and yeah. Uh, what's his name? His name right this minute. They just. Paris. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's pretty cool that they're trying to oh, do yeah. that. And yeah. I've not seen them, but um, I've heard people that have seen them, so their show's really, yeah. really good. They've done yeah. a good job. Yeah. Yeah. But um, another one that I think about a lot too, Sherry, is Ronnie Millsap. I, mean, oh, I know yes. he's still living, but yes. I had him a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And think about how what many a talent. hits that he had yes. over yeah. the years. Yeah. Just um, one of my can't replace them. One of my CDs. It's a double pack. Probably more songs on it than anybody. I can't remember the number, but I got it out the other day, and I have a double set CD of Ronnie Millsap. Hit after hit after hit after yes. hit. None of them were slackers. Hit after hit after hit yeah, after hit. He did. It yeah. was just amazing how many hits he had, and uh, I know his health has declined a lot, but. He was, he was one of the best, I mm -hmm. think. Absolutely. Um, we also have um, the Appalachian Brew Q and Stew Festival. That's coming up October the 26th, and that's about 75 breweries that will be coming, and uh, you, you go in and taste the, uh, it's unlimited tasting, and um, taste the different kinds of craft beer. That's a big event for us. It always, I, last year I had 38 Special there in concert for that, and this year we have an offer in, but we got it confirmed for Sarah Evans. It'll be there on Friday night if that mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. But that was a, um, that's a big event for us. People really enjoy that. And I have stages there on the grounds where people ha will have entertainment and they mm -hmm. sit down and listen to the music and eat their food or whatever, but there'll be vendors set up. It's really a fun, like I said, a fun event. So get your tickets set. And it's in the dead of fall. So yes, it, it is. Will be. It's the actually, leaves will be beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. the weekend after the fall festival. Yeah, so yeah. it's perfect timing. And, yeah. and if it gets cold, we've got some places we build some fires, you know, and mm -hmm. people can 
come and just, uh, it, and it's better if it is a little chilly, mm -hmm. you know, people mm -hmm. enjoy it more, yeah. I think. Yeah. The fall of the year is supposed to be chilly, right? Right, right. <laughs> and right. then we have um, our Mountain Country Christmas and Lights. This is something that we've been doing for about eight years, and that opens on Thanksgiving night and goes um, through uh, December the 23rd, and that's really... Um, do you have a number, how many people went through it this year? Yes, I do. We had 25,000 people go through there this year, which is a, a lot of people for mm -hmm. town. I mm -hmm. mean, because mm -hmm. under 12's free, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it was really amazing um, how many families come in. They came more than one time because they enjoyed it so much they wanted mm -hmm. to come back. Mm -hmm. But it's a walk through Christmas light show, and, and we added $100,000 worth of lights and displays wow. this year. The commission wow. gave us from the hotel and motel tax, which we helped create, yes, you know. Yes, yes, yeah. And uh, yeah. we added a lot of new things. And, and this coming year, we're going to add, hopefully get to add a new uh, item. It's going to be a train that'll take you through if you want to ride the train. Oh, neat. Um, yeah. We're working on that. We've been trying to... to um, Didn't y'all used to have a train that ran through We there had someone bit? that come in and just brought his... Right. It wasn't the fares, but this yeah. one will belong to the ferry if we get to do it, but it'll be a diesel engine and mm -hmm. you can ride, uh, children and adults can ride it through. That'll you know, be so. neat. And not only for the Christmas light show, but we can use it for other events. We can mm -hmm. put it in the parade, we can do whatever, you mm -hmm. know. But I that'll think that'll be, be neat. neat to have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that'll be neat. So, um, well, we're going to take a commercial break and when we come back, we're going to share just a little bit of an interview that we did with Charlie Pride. I can tell you, it is one of those things I will forever be grateful to have been that close, that personal with this man who was um, truly an icon in country music and sadly we lost him because of COVID. He was still healthy, he was still happy, he was still working and then COVID hit. So um, COVID sadly destroyed a lot of lives and um, when I look back, yeah, Charlie Pride to live that long, that healthy, that active and then something like COVID take him down. So we're going to go to that interview after we do a commercial. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> I've grown up, grown up, grown up, up every way, way and every way, guarantee I'll be your I've grown up and I know you're there. I've grown up and you know I care. Cause it's you and me and me and, me and, me and you. you. So when you are okay or not okay, I'll take care of you. swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool making a masterpiece or just making memories writing a great American novel 
or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia. We are at the Georgia Mountain Fairgrounds in Anderson Music Hall, one of my favorite locations to interview legends. Today I am with a true legend. I've waited a lifetime to interview Charlie Pride. He has 36 number one hits. He is one of those guys I listen to all of my long life. <laughs> I'm now 63 years old and I'm happy to say all the periods of my life there was never a time that your music wasn't touching me. Thank you for doing this interview, and thank you for fighting the Atlanta traffic to get here because you <laughs> fought the traffic, didn't you, honey? <laughs> every, bump, every, bump, every time he, every time he decided maybe we ought to go this, though, it, it goes like this for a little while. He said, two miles up will be work load. <laughs> no way around the Atlanta traffic. Um, you are a little bit older than me, and we, we're not going to disclose your age, but you're a little bit older than me. I'm still very active and on the go all the time, and it really does help keep my mind focused. Your mind is on so much. I mean, I'm sitting here listening to your interview. You love baseball. You love traveling. You love performing. You love your grandchildren. And I understand that you're going to leave here tonight and go back to Texas to do some things with your family. Charlie, how do you do all of this? Well, I, uh, what, well, I don't know, but I, I, I just, I just, I just do it. I mean, I don't, I try not to get all um, sideways about anything, and I uh -huh. just, if it's going to be, we're going to be, we're going to do it, we're going to do it, we're going to do it. Like, right. I'm, I'm late here, but we're still doing this, what we're supposed right. to do. I'm supposed to do this, what I'm supposed to, what I was supposed to do five prior to getting here, but then, but I've got to go pretty soon. I'm going to have to uh, dress and go do the show. Right. Right. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna squinch and scrunch about it. I mean I'm gonna do both. You of gotta it. do it. You gotta do it. So I, I don't know other than I just try to do it. Mm -hmm. I, Did you ever wake up one morning and say, "There's one more thing I want to do"? Is there anything that you haven't accomplished you would like to accomplish? Oh yeah, there's so many things. I, I like to make the world a little bit better place uh, than I've already done. I think I've done a pretty good job because I've got done a so, great so job. many fans that love my singing and treated me so fine and kind uh, but it's it's always another plateau I mean it's uh, and I figure the Lord let me stay here for some reason and I mentioned it earlier that I don't th I think it's it's better than just get up and lay down get up and eat and sleep and lay down I think it's always felt that there was something more to it than just that right um, I would think you were an overachiever because you don't just do you do then you overdo have you passed it on to your children well, I, I tried, but I don't. I don't know whether I've done it. <laughs> and I, I, I've spoiled a lot of, uh, especially my Surely daughter. Surely not, <laughs> Angela. You have a daughter named oh, Angela. Oh boy, she 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 wears me out. Yeah, I had a daughter named Angela, and a very special young lady. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. she's special, but don't no, no, no finger that. We're gonna do right. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get my attention, isn't he? <laughs> He'll tell you right quick. I don't usually pay attention to him, but. I, I can tell you something about your music. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know anybody who wasn't touched by some of it. And, and we were talking yesterday about our favorite songs. And we all had such different ideas of favorite songs. My favorite is All I Have to Offer You Is Me. That was my first number one. I absolutely fell in love with that song and I wore it out playing it. Does Charlie Pride have a favorite song? Is yes. there one? Which one? Yes, the one I'm singing at the moment. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. And that's that, pretty cool. That's not just I'm making an answer, mm -hmm. but it's the truth. For example, uh, in, uh, in in we we go to Ireland and we have to kind of change us not change but in, interchange songs. Mm -hmm. For for example, Crystal Chandeliers was never a single, but I've been doing it in my show all these years. Mm -hmm. When I go to they, they released it in Ireland as a single about two or three times. I get ready to do that song. It's oh the crystal the walls tremble. So, oh, wow. so 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 I'm I'm loving doing that song. Yeah. I go to Australia, New Zealand. They got 
Uh, oh, wings of a song. <laughs> so, so I love singing when I'm singing that. Yeah. So, whatever I'm singing at the moment wasn't just said out of uh, trying to be smitten, but about it. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. When I'm, it. And I've, I've been blessed with being able to do songs from albums that people love more than they do. What you said a moment ago, what mm -hmm. you like. All I have to offer you to me was my first number one single. But there's people that go in that album and they pick, pick this one out and they pick that one out. Right. And the reason for that is Jack Clement. Because he said, no, we're going to go put All I Have to Offer You to Me and then do uh, uh, Kiss an Angel Good Morning, just throw a whole bunch of songs around. We're going to do songs that everything we do, we think that could be a single. If it's an A song, we didn't make it a double A. If it's a double A, make it a triple A. Uh -huh. So we just don't do songs to just throw them in to fill up the album. Right. So I think that's why I sold, I have sold so many albums. Uh, I only had one million Southern single, and that was Kissing Angel Good Morning, but I've sold, I don't know how many albums. How many couples do you think started their romance with that song on the radio? Oh, I don't know me. Oh, no, Kissing Angel Good Morning. I know what women Both feel. Are. Yeah, well, I know what women feel when they're listening to that song. I, know I what they just feel received an email from a lady who says, "My broke. We were going to school, high school, and I love. We love one another, but we broke up, and we came back together. Now we've been married 35 years. <laughs> Your song, All I've Offered You Is Me, brought us back together. Absolutely. Okay, okay, absolutely." We're going to take a break for just a minute because we're going to have to end this quickly because you were the Georgia Mountain Fairgrounds. We're in beautiful, beautiful Hiawassee, Georgia. Now, I came here listening to a song called Smoky Mountain Memories, and I found the man responsible for this song when I got here, Mr. Earl Thomas Conley. Yeah, I gave you a little different version tonight. You did. <laughs> now, let's talk about this is a 1974 song. Yeah. And you don't usually do it in your program. No, we don't. No, we, we've changed so many band members and stuff, and we used to do it all the time. I've got a whole bunch of stuff i got to get back into the show, but... Let's talk about the writing of that song. Yeah, I wrote it with Dick Hurd. Uh, he had a false name, Richmond Devereaux, <laughs> or something uh -huh. like that. Uh -huh. Anyway, he passed away a few years back and um, invited me. I was living in Huntsville. And I wanted to know if I had any good ideas for songs, and I just gave him this idea. And we sat there and wrote it and everything, and then I got, and Mel Street recorded it. Whose and version do I like the best? Yours. Pardon me? I like your version better. Do you? I've listened well, you to You didn't both. tonight, though. Tonight? <laughs> I didn't like tonight, my version at all. Well, tonight I couldn't was remember. one of those nights. We do I'll have to you. say, you've got the flu. You've oh, this stuff is just makes you crazy. Yeah. Er. <laughs> but, but great performance. Well, thank um, you. Love Angel in Disguise. You do. So many number one songs. Now let's talk about that. I got 21, more. 21 number one songs? All together. And then we had, I don't know how many top tens, but we had more number ones than, than we had top tens because shortly after I got started, I started having number one. So we went out and found the best. If uh, By the time I got started real good, about holding her and loving you, I ran out of my own songs. And... Uh, Robert Byrne and Walt Aldridge and a bunch of boys from Muscle Shoals. I used to go to Muscle Shoals all the time and do demos and work with those guys over there when I was living in Huntsville. And so they caught on to my, my style and wrote songs for me. So I had a whole bunch of them in a row that they wrote. Your style is very unique. Yeah, Today, it is just as it was 20 years ago? Yeah, well, let's see. The last thing I recorded was uh, 91 with Keith Whitley. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when it went to number one. And what's that one called? Brotherly Love. Brotherly Love. Yeah. Did he live to see that released? No. No. No, he, no, he didn't make it that long. Well, we're going to take a break right now, and we're going to go to some of your music, because right. we led into this with my favorite song, Smoky Mountain Memories. Now we're going to go to the one that Keith didn't live to see released. Um, did it go to number one? Yeah. Do you think um, tonight when you did that, does it bring back memories of him? Yeah, sometimes you want you feel like crying yeah, up there. Yeah, that's right. Especially if the crowd's real good. Well, we're going to take a break right now, and we're going to go to that song and let our audience hear that. Cool. And maybe some of them will remember this song. Number one, uh, written by who? Oh, now, that, now you ask me a hard question. I, I know their names, but it's more than one person. Two or three guys, I think. Great song. 
And we, did, we didn't record it at the same time. We did. I did my piece while he was on the road, and he came in and finished it up when he, when he got in off the road. So. Oh wow! Well, tonight we're going to show him a version of you and your band tonight doing this song. There you go. Now, who sang Keith's part tonight? Mike Powell. Mike Powell. Let's go to the song. The banjo Brother and Ryan. mandolin player. Uh huh. We saw that. <laughs> Guitar we saw that. guy. Let's go to some great Earl Collin music. You just got to hear tonight's live version of Keith Whitley's song. Um, is that one of your favorites? Yeah, Keith was one of my favorite people too. Uh mm huh. -hmm. And he was how old when he passed away? How old? How old was he? 40? I don't know. Was he about 40? <laughs> we never did check each other's age or anything out. He was, I know he was awful young. Awful young. Yeah, what an was, amazing talent. Oh. What an amazing talent. Own worst enemy, I guess. Yep. Now let's talk about your travels. Um, where will you go this year and where can people find you? I'm going to go to Oklahoma and Texas next. Are you going to be with B.J. Thomas? Yeah. I, I think it's Oklahoma. Mm hmm Durant, Oklahoma, I believe. How do you know all that? You know more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised by that. I have to know check with you. you to find out what I'm supposed to be doing. That's right. That's right. Uh, we worked with him down in Alabama here a couple of years ago, I guess, and uh, it was a real good show. A bunch of bunch of people. Well, my favorite B.J. Thomas song is Billy and Sue. So when you see him, tell him to do it and send it back to Georgia for me. There you go. He has a <laughs> lot of good stuff, but he's like you. There's always that one song. Now, when you step on stage, what is the one song everybody wants to hear? It's changed some over the years. Holding Her and Loving You has been, oh, a, yes. been a steady one. Oh, yes. That is a great song. Tonight, I stood behind the curtain watching men in the audience sing that song. And been I there. love that. Yeah. They've been I, there, I done think that. some men out there have been there, done that. Yeah. Cheater, cheater, cheater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not good. No. Okay, let's talk about your band. Do you have members that have been with you a while? The piano player has been with me. He's well, amazing. actually, the, Mike Pyle, the guy that done that helped me with Brotherly Love, has been with me about 14, 15 years, I mm -hmm. guess. And John's next. He's been with me uh, a little less time than that. And then Dan over on the right plays the, the lead guitar from Des Moines. He's been with me the third longest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the drummer's new. He did a good job tonight. And I forgot, I used to, was forgetting his name. I, they got to work with me <coughs> for a while before it comes to you what, what their name is. Now, what about your bus driver? How did he end up singing? Uh, he's always done. He's up from up in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. And him and his brothers had bands and stuff. And I was lucky enough to run into him here a few years back. I mean, he's the best driver. You can sleep. I don't care what kind of road it is. Uh -huh. He is so good as a driver and a great singer, too. Yeah, he, he did a good job tonight. We got a little footage of him, and we're going to show a little bit of that. Right now, we're going to take a break, and we're going to go to another song I think I want to do. Oh, what is my favorite? I kind of like Angel in Disguise. Do you like that song? Yeah, I wrote it. Love me that and, song. Me and Randy Scruggs wrote it. Love that song. Let's go to one of my favorites. Not my favorite now. Smoky Mountain Memories is my absolute favorite. But we're going to let it's people gonna get It's going to think you're cheating on it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get a little taste of a little bit of different music by you because Good. you've done some fast. You've done some old. You've done some stuff about cheating. You've done some stuff about being faithful. You did a great one tonight. We're going to go to in just a minute. But right now, we're going to Angel in Disguise. Now, if you want to hear Earl Thomas Connolly music, you're going to have to go to YouTube because we don't have time to play it because we've got to talk about the new inspirations are going to be at the Georgia Mountain Fair. Yes, they are going to be there. We always have a gospel day um, every year during the fair, and we have a gospel day during the fall festival, but they'll be there. Uh, the first Sunday of the fair. The fair starts on August the 16th, so that would be um, August the 18th, I guess, that they would And if there. you have not seen the new inspirations, I, I loved the old inspirations. Uh -huh. I still like Matt Dibler and Resurrection because, you know, he right. and Melton Campbell and um, Darren, they're all out touring and they're doing the inspiration songs. But these new guys, Oh, holy cow. They are really they are amazing. They are. They're they amazing. do a fantastic yeah. job. Yeah. We'll have the the the, fest, the fair will open at 10 o'clock that morning with all the arts and crafts and the Pioneer Village and all the exhibits and everything. And then um, the um, sh the church services will be at 11 o'clock. And uh, Reagan Riddle uh, with the Primitive Quartet, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. his son-in-law will conduct the church services that awesome. morning at 11. And then usually Reagan comes and sings a little bit with them, you mm -hmm. know. 
and tries to do a few things and then we'll take a break and everybody can go out on the grounds and have lunch or whatever and then we start back at two o'clock with the gospel music. Mm -hmm. So we've got three groups that'll be performing. You can go to our website at georgiamountainfairgrounds.com and get all the information. Uh, well, if it's not, everything's not up yet, it'll be up mm -hmm. here real mm -hmm. soon because we're trying to get it all put together. And you know, it's so weird because we're sitting here talking about people who are gone and now, sadly, because of the cost of things, the Isaacs, number one in everything they do, you can't even afford them now. No, I can't. They're doing it. Um, I've had them like 20-something years in a row. I mean, they're for the fall. I got to interview Lily Isaacs. Did you really? What a precious, she is precious, precious lady. Yes, she what is. What a precious, precious lady. She, she always is. would call me and, and advance the show with me when it would come time for them to come to Hiawassee. And she was so precious just to talk to and mm -hmm, advance the show mm -hmm. with. So humble and so mm -hmm. kind. Love and them. They were just great. But I think they were going to do a TV series. That she told me about that. And then they were traveling overseas right. some too. They got right. an opportunity to yeah. go to Europe and do some shows. So yeah. the price of them just went up so much I just couldn't afford them. But that's yeah. what's happened since COVID. Mm -hmm. Entertainment has gone out the roof, the mm -hmm. cost of entertainment. I cannot mm -hmm. believe how much all the entertainment has gone up. And not just entertainment, everything you look at has gone mm -hmm. up. Absolutely. Um, well, we were talking about that today. Um, I watched something on Fox and they were talking about a business. It's a daycare center. And I can tell you the average price of getting your child cared for today is $165 a week. If you're a single mom and you're paying $165 a week and you're making $15 an hour, you can't live on that. No, you can't. You can't live on that, but you get turned down for food stamps. And I've seen it happen, but then you cross the border illegally and they hand you a $10,000 oh, yeah. gift card. Yeah. Welcome to America. Yeah. We just gave your sorry self $10,000. Right. So the cost of selling a hot dog at the fairgrounds has gone up, the cost of a Coke at the fairgrounds, every single thing. Gone but up. you've been able to maintain a good price for people to have good family fun. Yes, we have. And we've tried to do that and we try to take that into consideration. When we're booking all this talent and we're or we're spending all these dollars for the talent, we try to think, well, we got to keep the ticket price as reasonable as we can. Exactly. And and when you pay the talent, that's not all the expense. You've got like, catering, you've got security, you've got stagehands, you've got a lot involved mm -hmm. in all this. Um, so there's a lot of extra costs you're advertising and everything that goes with it. But we try to keep it reasonable to where people can still come and bring their families enjoy what we have to offer there at the fairgrounds, entertain people, and they can go away with a smile and say, oh, I want to go back again. I really right. love that place. Right. And that's what we've tried to do. So we, we feel like we've got a great place for entertainment. We're very thankful that we've got the venue there in Hiawassee and got the campgrounds. We've got 217 campsites there on the fairgrounds along with the Hamilton Gardens. And you can actually come there and camp and walk to the venue. Mm -hmm. uh, you can um, stay at Lake Chatug Lodge, which is right next door. You can walk over. There's a trail to walk over. There's several places to stay in Hiawassee. We've got the Holiday Inn Express. We've got the Ridges Resort, Brasstown Valley Resort. Uh, there's a lot of bed and breakfast cabins, cottages, lots of places to stay. And you can contact the Towns County Chamber of Commerce. It's Lake Chatug Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. for accommodations or whatever. Or give us a call there at the Georgia Mountain Fairgrounds. We're happy to help and accommodate you, and we want you to have a come and have a good time and just really, really enjoy what we have to offer. Now, I know that in January, is that when you start doing the campsites? We do. Uh, well, the first of November, if you're going to stay a month or more, we started first working day in November for a month or more, and then the first working day in January for any reservations less than 30 days. Mm -hmm. And we have made so many reservations. It's unbelievable. I just can't imagine that there could even be anything left to make any reservations mm -hmm. with because people after COVID or during COVID really went out and bought campers mm -hmm. because they wanted to mm -hmm. be outdoors and they they flooded the North Georgia mountains with right. campers and tents right. and right. getting outdoors and having fun. And I think it's wonderful that they could do that. They did and I think that's why we survived during COVID when other people were shut down, people were losing everything is because we said welcome to these mountains yes. even though COVID was around we were cautious, everybody was considerate, and people came to the mountains and they found a different lifestyle. They Many did. of them are now working from their home they are. instead of going back to the office. Yes, yeah. I've seen that so much. And, and when I was there at the Christmas light show, people, young families come up, you know, have small children, and they say, oh, we moved here, we, we're working from home, you know, mm -hmm, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. And yeah. it just amazes me. And they come from all over the United States, yeah. you know, they yeah. found us. Yeah. But we're there to serve the public and let people have fun, entertain them, and have a great time, and hopefully 
that people will return saying this is a wonderful place we want to come back again it's mm -hmm. a, it really is a great venue and for folks who haven't been is it still twelve dollars to get in it's seven dollars to get into the fair mm -hmm. under twelve is free and then we're doing some reserve concert tickets the seats are reserved so the tickets for the concerts are extra okay. um, the the bigger concerts so you pay but if you buy a concert ticket then your admission to the fair is included in that okay so we're doing it a little bit different it's all on our website it's ex explains it and everything but mm -hmm. it's still a bargain to see mm -hmm. what you see there at the fairgrounds and oh, yeah. um, enjoy what you've got there and it's such a safe place to come to too right so. that's what i was about to add if you come to these mountains you know people crack me up because they're like looking everywhere for criminals well thank goodness we don't have a lot of them right. but but let's let's talk a little bit about what is happening in america um athens georgia just witnessed a violent murder because of our open border so as you vote as you pray as you live your life remember the family this young girl is from cherokee county georgia yes. she was a nursing student at athens there is no excuse for the open border. There is no excuse for the violent gang members from Venezuela, Honduras, Honduras uh, Mexico, China, uh, the Arab countries. People are coming in from everywhere because somebody opened the border and said, come in and rape, murder, and kill America. I know, that's And awful. that's exactly what's happening. And if you're not praying about it, if your church isn't praying about it, they need to be, because we know prayer works. Yes, it does And work. we can stop this craziness, and I don't care how we stop it. We need to stop it right now. We don't need another day of 15,000 people coming into the country that we don't know. Have you been to Atlanta Airport and tried to fly out lately? Yes, I have. Okay, you yes. have to give 12 pints of blood yes. and 29 other yeah. things to get, to get on a plane. But you can come into America with everything bad about your from yeah. your psychiatric uh, craziness that you've been in a mental institution in one of these countries you can come to america and we're going to hand you ten thousand yeah. dollars the same time we're turning down single moms for yeah. food stamps so sad? can you tell i'm a little bit irritated today really what's that, right's right and what's wrong's wrong that open border sucks yes absolutely yep. and that beautiful girl that was murdered she she oh. should be alive today oh my gosh she no was... excuse no excuse she did nothing wrong nobody did anything wrong uh, they said oh well she was running alone okay she should be running alone in athens georgia at her school and and you know it's crazy it is the whole thing is sad but but please pray for their family because i i was watching the interview this morning on fox and it just made me sick to my stomach not only had that guy already been arrested for shoplifting and, and didn't even show up for an appearance and had been stopped in New York for something else, and then he comes to Georgia and commits a murder, so two times they had a chance to get him right. and deport him, and instead, oh, smack him on the hand, right. and that was it. Oh, and yeah. so then he commits a murder in Georgia. I know. So Terrible. It's, it's sickening. Think we, about we, what those, the family's having to go through. Oh, I mean. yeah, yeah. We do want Georgia to remain safe, and right now, if you have a student at the University of Georgia right now, you're probably a nervous wreck yeah, because of mm -hmm. what happened on in your area. And everybody said, well, you know, we should have known better. Well, we did. We didn't open the border. Somebody else did. So, And, and when that other person that's up there in D.C. that I don't mention her name because it makes me want to throw up, when she went down and declared the border safe, yes. oh, <laughs> get man. real, get yes. real. It's sad. It's well, sad. Well, Brian Kemp, our governor, I think, is stepping up, and he's he trying is. to do he is. what's right. Yes. And I'm yes. happy that he's helping. Yes, and our attorney general today was on the news, and he was talking about this will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, and he will not walk on this right. one. He will not walk on this one. So, um, sadly, he did walk on two other opportunities to not only arrest him, but to deport him. Yes. And they didn't do that. Yes. So, um, today... As we live our lives out in, in the mountains of North Georgia, we want to feel safe. We want to feel secure. And the way to feel safe and secure is to shut the stupid border down. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> shut the stupid border down. We have no business letting in all these people. If you are coming into our country legally, welcome, welcome. But please, come in, come in legally. Absolutely. So, yeah, yes. yeah. Oh, now, is that enough of my preaching? No, you've done a good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
it's time for us to get out of here. Thank okay. you for everything. And y'all, look at what Miss Hilda brought me. And I'm telling you, we're going to play some games on Facebook. And we're going to be giving away tickets. We got tickets and tickets and tickets and tickets. And so y'all just pay attention to my Facebook page. And remember, we will be on YouTube with this program in a little bit. So share it with your friends. And then we will be back at ETC 5 o'clock this evening and 11 o'clock tonight. So, and guess what you didn't get today? Not one single Mr. L.J. song. He will whoop me when they I get will. off here. I'll get a call. I'll get a call. You'll get that uh, next program, I promise you. We'll see you again soon on ETC. Bye, y'all.